So we left off looking at phase shift. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the phase shifts of our possible general forms of sine and cosine. So we've identified how the A and the B help us with amplitudes and periods. So now we're going to look at the capital letters C and D, and that causes a phase shift. So first of all, we're going to look at horizontal placement. Um, and so you can see that we're going to be looking at C divided by B, comes from that general form. If C is greater than zero, we're going to be looking at a shift to the right. And if C is less than zero, we're going to be looking at a shift to the left. And so what I want to do is I want to kind of look at two examples of sine and kind of show you how this exists. So you can see that, first of all, my f function is just sine x. That's our basic sine graph. We already know what it looks like. Our sine graph starts at 0, 0. Let's see. We'll call this 1 and negative 1. So it goes up comes down, oh, a little too far over, and so you can see how here is this just y equals to sine x, so there's our f function. Now you'll notice the differences between these two equations is that this has a minus pi in here. So having this minus pi in here, and again, let's look at our general form, a e y equals a sine of bx minus c plus d. So having this minus pi in here, this is my c. You can see that pi is my c. Pi is greater than zero, so we're going to be shifting each of these points to the right pi units. And so if I shift this one over to the right pi units, I get this point. If I shift this point here at pi over 2 over pi units, I'm now at 3 pi over 2. The same is true. Pi now moves to 2 pi. And you can see that this function would shift this direction. And if you like, I could backtrack it half a period here. And you can see that this is my g of x function. So it still has a way of going up one unit and coming down all the way to negative one, but it's taken this blue graph here and shifted it over pi units to create this new graph. So we have something known as also a vertical shift. So now this brings in D. D indicates, and again, we're looking at Y equal to possibly cosine of BX minus C plus D. So now this D brings in the vertical shift. And so if I take my cosine function and add D to it, I'm not going to talk about A, B's, or C's right now, just the letter D. We can say that the midline is at the equation Y equal to D. So first of all, again, let me go back to my sine function. Hope you'll draw this enough that you'll remember kind of what this function looks like. And so you can see here's my sine X function. So if I add plus 2 to it, it's going to shift all of my units up 2. And with my sine x function, it currently has no shifts in it. So if you like, at y equal to 0 is its midline, the middle between the maximum and the minimum. So if I move this midline up 2 units, here's 2 that new midline would be up here at y equal to 2. Notice I have no horizontal shifts. I'm not going to change the amplitude or the period, so it's still going to start here. We're going to go up. We're going to come down. And so we get a graph. Change pins too soon. Something like this. So you can see that your sine function has just moved all the points up two units or in general moved your midline up two units. And so what you're going to be able to do now is take all of these different changes and characteristics and let's just kind of summarize it all together. And since we looked at our sine function as we went through each of them, I'm going to look at my sine function here. So in summary, if you're given this general form here, your amplitude is the absolute value of A. Your period becomes 2 pi divided by the absolute value of B. Your phase shifts are C over B, meaning 
it's going to be moving left or right with your C and up or down with your D and your new midline is created at Y equal to D. Now how do you graph these new functions? How do you go from a function of Y equals sine X into this general form and graph it? First express the function in general form. If we're talking about sine, we're talking about A sine of BX minus C plus D. So you can identify your A, B's, and C's. Identify your amplitude. Identify your period. Identify your phase shifts. And then draw your graph. You want to first draw your graph dealing with your A's and B's because we know that that reflects um, possibly your reflection in the graph, your amplitude or period changing, and then apply your shift to the right or left and up or down. Putting all these steps together, you can graph these along the way.